Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So, origin to Canada Nil Copa America 2024 re reaction. So, your opening match, guys. I'm going to give you guys that video reaction for you guys. So, I'm going to start. Let me explain how this. I'm going to do this video. I'm going to start with Canada. I want to talk about the Canada perspective first, and then talk about origin perspective. And then just give you guys um, how I think the group can finish out potentially. So, let's start with the Canada perspective. Canada, I thought, played well in this one. This was an amazing performance because we have to keep in mind the context is that, yes, I know Canada lost the game 2 now, and I know people are going to go in the chat say, or comments and say, why are you giving so much praise to a team that just lost? Guys, context is key. This is the first time Canada has ever played in the Copa America in their history. We also have to keep in mind that they're playing up against the World Cup champions, the Copa America champions. So naturally, the task will be difficult at hand. And let's be real, guys. Many of us had low expectations for Canada this game. Best case, maybe a draw. And even that is like being optimistic. Canada held their own in this game. You have to give them that. Jesse Marsh did his homework. He got his tactics spot on. He made RJ uncomfortable at times. Canada were playing a very good style of football. Counter-attacking style that was causing a lot of issues to Argentina, especially their pacey players. The, the pace they, can, they, they had was causing a lot of issues to Argentina's defense. It's just that RG's defense is so solid right now. It, it, you can maybe argue it's one of the world's best defenses right now in the world. As well as the fact that Canada just didn't have the finishing on the day. Because if Canada were clinical with their chances, oh, they could have walked out here with a draw. Or yeah, maybe even a win. So you have to give them that credit. I thought Canada, for me, were fantastic. I thought um, uh, Krepu was amazing. He made a lot of big saves. I thought the center back, Bombito, was great. I thought Kone was amazing as well. And yeah, just saw Canada, for me, the midfield defense was fantastic. It was just their attack was so lackluster. Like, that Buchanan chance, just right before halftime, it was, it was such a bad miss. Like, he puts it on target, it's a goal, right? And, and then I think Alfonso Davis had a big header in the second half. He should have scored that, I believe. Or was it the... Yeah, like... So the thing is, like, for Canada, as I said, man, they, they, they created chances. They just weren't clinical enough, right? And you can see in the stats, your overall stats here, they were able to create 10 shots, two on target. Two on target is simply four. And two big chances, and two big chances missed. Canada just weren't clinical at all. So, for Canada, this kind of performance just shows to me that Canada is here to compete. They're not just going to be here and just win. They're not going to be here just to make up the numbers. They're going to compete in this group. And given how open the group is for second place, I think Canada have a great chance to advance. For me, though, the crucial game for me for Canada, and I think the decisive game is going to be that Canada versus Chile. Because Chile, for me, I rate very highly. Especially under Ricardo Goreca. He's such a very good coach. I'm very intrigued to see how the match goes. Because that's going to be the telling match where I think that's going to decide Canada's fate. I think Canada, they... I mean, we'll have to see what Peru does. Because obviously it's a big rivalry tomorrow. Peru versus Chile. That's going to be a huge game, of course. But for like Canada, I think they have to... That, that game against Chile is going to be the decisive game. They're gonna, they obviously need to try to aim to win against uh, Peru. And let's, uh, let's assume Chile wins against Peru, all right? So it puts down this group on the final match day. And then let's say Argent tops the group, because they should, realistically, theoretically speaking. It makes the second place battle very, very interesting. So I'm very interested to see how that goes. So now let's talk about for um, Argentina in particular. I thought Argentina, for me, in this game, were a bit lackluster. Now, I'm not saying that they were terrible. I think that's a bit of an overreaction. But they weren't at their best, let's be real. And I think many people would agree with this. Because in that first half, they were a bit underwhelming. They create a lot of chances, but they just weren't good uh, clear cut goal scoring opportunities, right? And that first half they struggled to make they struggled to create any good chance. They struggled to create work struggled to finish, right? Di Maria had that chance that he should have scored. And it was a big chance, you know, and the thing for Argentina is that their lineup is so amazing that they could they have they could afford to bench some of the best players. Like you could bench Los Celso, you can bench Lautaro Martinez, you could bench Otamendi, you could bench Montiel, you can bench you could bench these kind of players. Enzo Fernandez didn't even come off. Palacios, like many of these players I'm just mentioning right now, Garnacho Gonzalez, but they'll probably start for most national teams in the world. It's just that RG did it is so amazing right now. They're so stacked that it's incredible. RG for me didn't really look that great the first half. But in the second half, they raised their game. Messi got that pre-assist to McAllister. McAllister gets it to Alvarez, and Alvarez scores. And it could have been a penalty. If Alvarez goes down inside the box, it's a penalty. Alvarez has said, you know what? I'm just going to go for goal. No, actually, McAllister. McAllister went down. Then it would have been a penalty. Alvarez went for goal. On the second goal, 
fantastic goal uh, there from uh, Lautaro Martinez. Messi getting the assist there. And even though Messi w- missed a lot of chances this game, you know, he missed a lot of 1v1s in particular, which is pretty uncharacteristic for Messi. We know how good Messi is in 1v1 situations particularly. He's very clinical. He still was lively on the day. And that's what makes this Messi is so dangerous, is that even when Messi is not having a bad day in the office when it comes to goal scoring wise, the guy can still be great when it comes to his through passes, when it comes to his intelligence off the uh with his passing. You know, Di Maria I thought was pretty underwhelming. I thought Di Maria wasn't that great in the game. Or uh, DePaul I thought was great. I thought Paredes was great as well. He had a good chance early on in the game, if I remember correctly. McAllister I thought was great. Molina, Romero, Martinez, Acuna. I mean, Martinez, I think for Argentina, they just were able to control the game and, and everything like that. So for Argentina, as I said, man, let's see how they do in the Copa America. Because for me, obviously for Argentina, they're, they're, the expectations for them to do back-to-back. And with their lofty expectations, they have to do back-to-back. The, the expectation is to do back-to-back. They ha- at least have to reach the final. If they don't reach the final, it's a failure. It's a failure if they don't reach the final. So for me, for Argentina, we'll see how this team really gets tested. Because for me, for Argentina... They should be able to clean sweep this group. They should be able to take care of the quarterfinal opponent. And the semifinals, that's where it could be tricky because they could potentially play against Ecuador. And we know how good Ecuador is, even though they're poorly coached. So for Argentina, as I said, man, not really a whole lot to say. Uh, like I said, the first half, they were a bit underwhelming, but the second half, they did raise their gear. And you can just see, let me just, let me just show you stats right here. Seven shots, two on target. Second half, 12 shots, seven on target. So they were much better in the second half. And yeah, as I said, so basically... If there's anything to note, a critique from Argentina is that Messi has to be a bit better when it comes to goal scoring because he missed a lot of chances, man, 1v1, which is kind of insane for a player of his caliber. But yeah, I mean, he's still effective, man. He's still effective. That's the crazy thing. So as I said, man, even when Messi's not his best, he could still be very dangerous. So I hope you guys did enjoy this little quick reaction, guys, of the Copa America, guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If there's any major target points, please let me know. And remember, guys, I'll be doing daily coverage of the Copa America on the channel for every match day. So please remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.